Hello everyone, my name is Evan Freiberger and today we're going to be talking about the Aurora forecast. We're going to be going over the cloud cover and maybe some opportunities for cloud breaks for some areas that might be getting some cloud cover but could have a little bit of time to view the Aurora. We have a pretty decent sized Aurora coming in and a lot of people on the northern part of the country are going to be able to see this Aurora as it happens. So let's go ahead and go over the best times to look at it and also where the cloud cover is going to be. All right, first looking at the current conditions across the United States, you can see that we do have some cloud cover uh, over here in this portion of the United States. It is going to be moving over to the east. Some cloud breaks are going to be possible within this. So just because this is about to move over your area, you know, it is going to move to the east. So areas like Wisconsin, also areas like uh, Michigan as well, are going to be getting some cloud cover as this moves into the areas. But the good news over here for South and North Dakota going into Nebraska, it does seem like that cloud cover is not really going to be there on the peak time times of the Aurora. So that's good news. Also, yeah, every now and then you get a little bit of an Aurora arc that brings it a little bit further to the south. It's always a possibility. So, you know, if you do live in the Ohio Valley over here near West Virginia and Virginia, you know, maybe try to go out and see something. You're going to have to use a long exposure camera, but it's definitely something worth doing because it's a pretty cool experience if you can capture it. Also, over here in the northeast, going to have some cloud cover mainly on the northern parts of New York and Maine, but over here closer to the coast, you'll have a better chance of seeing that aurora. But we're going to be going over the actual forecast here and give you guys a little bit better of a understanding of where the clouds are going to be. All right, so we're expecting this aurora to happen between 3 and 9 p.m. Those are going to be about the best viewing hours. You know, around 3 o'clock, it's going to be mainly for the northern part of the country where it gets dark a little bit earlier. And then, you know, going into the later portions of the night, you know, as it gets darker and you get away from the city lights, you should be able to see something on the northern part of of the United States. But pushing this forward, uh, you can see that those cloud covers over here near Michigan and Wisconsin, also in Minnesota, are going to be experiencing too much cloud cover to really see too much. There might be some little breaks in there. So if you're really enthusiastic about this event, go out there and still try. You never know what you might see. I mean, this is going into about 3 or 4 p.m. here and then pushing this all the way here to 6 p.m. You can see there's a lot of cloud cover over here in Wisconsin and Michigan. We have a big belt of clearing here in Maine, New Hampshire, Vermont, over in like basically the New England area, you know, the northern parts of that area are going to be covered by clouds. But, you know, as you go into West Virginia, Northern Virginia, Kentucky, and parts of the Ohio Valley here, you know, you can tell that there's a little bit of clearing there. And then also over here in Nebraska, South Dakota, North Dakota, there's not going to be a whole lot of clouds out. So there's definitely going to be some opportunities to see this aurora. The further you go west, though, it does seem like there's going to be quite a bit of cloud cover out there. So make sure, you know, that you are keeping that in mind if you do decide to go out there does seem to be a couple of breaks in the clouds out there so you know maybe some better chances could arise as the night goes on so just you know go out there set your cameras up and hope for the best if you're over here in the pacific northwest okay so here is the aurora forecast for tonight as you can see in canada and alaska are really going to be the best places to see the best aurora chances but you could still see something with a better camera and long exposure not with the naked eye unfortunately all the way down into Nebraska, Iowa, New York, and the Northeast there. So that's why we were talking about the clouds up there. I was like the best viewing times are going to be between 3 and 9 p.m. You know, adjust that to your times. This is an Eastern time here. And the keys for viewing this Aurora is going to be finding a location away from city lights and light pollution and some photography tips using a long exposure mode on your camera. Use a tripod because you're going to need to stabilize that camera as it is taking in all that extra life. If there's any shakes, it'll come out blurry and kind of skewed and also the best way to do it is use a remote or a timer you don't necessarily need that you can do it just basic exposure also you could do it with an iphone uh, iphones have that exposure mode and you can capture up to 10 seconds but you have to make sure that it's held still looking at the sky and last but not least with those clouds comes weather not a whole lot of stuff going on across the united states right now pushing this forward though going into you know the 14th here at around 9 a.m we're expecting some heavier showers potentially some thunderstorms Maybe one or two of these could become severe, but as of right now, the instability is pretty weak with this storm, and there's going to drop some beneficial rain there for Louisiana, Mississippi, going into southern Alabama, and then going into, you know, later in the day, could potentially see some spotty showers up there in the northern portions of the southeast, but it's not going to be really that much to produce much drought relief. The main drought relief is going to come from central Alabama into Georgia, Mississippi, and Louisiana. Also, moving over here to the west coast, you can see that we also have a big little swirly thing 
off the coast there. This is going to bring some rain and it's going to be windier as well. But for the most part, it's not going to be a storm that, you know, you can't handle. It's something that happens every now and then this time of year. So looking at the estimated precipitation totals here for the next five days, uh, you can see the big band here of around three to four, maybe even some spotty areas of five inches are going to be possible from Houston down into southern Texas. The main areas, though, they're going to be getting this rain is going to be Louisiana going into the southern coast of Mississippi and Florida and southern Alabama with potential up to four inches. And as you get closer to the coast here in Florida, this could definitely change as we get closer, but eight inches could potentially be possible. But I wouldn't be surprised if this shifts around. So don't take this exact area as complete truth because models change all the time, especially when we're this far out. Fortunately for the northern portions of Alabama, Georgia and Mississippi, not really seeing much, maybe a couple traces. Pretty much what we got from this last storm is going to be possible with this one. Coming over to the west coast, looks like it's going to stay pretty dry. The GFS is picking up only about a half an inch here of rain, so really not too big of a rain maker down there. Looks like the biggest band of precipitation is going to be, you know, over here going into Oregon and Washington with around two inches possible there near Medford in between Medford and Portland and then going up to northern Washington. You can see potentially maybe two to three inches there, but I'm pretty sure that's going to be snowfall. So let's go over to here. Yeah, that's snowfall in the mountains, you know, maybe even two to three feet possible there on that mountain. But snowfall across the rest of the country, not a lot going on. Maybe some trace amounts there in northern Wisconsin, but that's not really going to be much of an accumulation at all. Just mainly a dusting and then coming over here to the northeast, you know, maybe one to three inches there for New York, seven inches in the mountains of Vermont and around five to three inches in the mountains of New Hampshire with some trace amounts existing in Maine. All right, that's it for me. Thank you for watching and I'll see you on the next one.